Hey, Sun here. I'm a privacy and security researcher, and you're watching the Privacy Guides. I am super stoked to announce that Superbacked is now available for purchase. I've been working on this project full time for the past six months, and I've been dreaming about this for the past two years. One of the hardest problems that I've encountered as a privacy and security researcher is how can one create governance schemes that allow one to be in control while one is alive and conscious, yet pass on secrets uh, if ever something happens to us. It's something that I think a lot of you will relate to if you have anything to do with crypto, but it's also something that has to do with password managers. You have this password manager with all of your passwords, or you have your phone that is locked, that handles uh, you know, 2FA, TOTP, and maybe you want to give those credentials over to your spouse or your children if you pass away, but want to remain in control while you're alive. You wouldn't want to give access to your Binance account to everyone, uh, you know, if you don't have to, but if you have to, you want to. So it's really a problem that's super tough to solve. I mean, how do you even approach this? Um, and I'm really pumped to say that I think I've solved that in Superbact. So Superbact is really an app that I've been craving for so long. It's an app that one uses to create encrypted paper backups. It can be backups one of one. This here is a great example of one. What you see here is really state of the art when it comes to cryptography, but it's also machine readable into Superbact, and I'm gonna demo all of this in a second. But where Superbact really shines is when it comes to establishing governance schemes. Uh, so for instance, what you see here is a set of three blocks and in order to recover the secret, you need to have the passphrase, but you also need to have two out of three blocks. Any two is totally fine. It uses Shamir secret sharing under the hood, which means that if you only have one and the passphrase, it's impossible to recover the secret. And that means that you can have one that you share with your spouse or your children and you share the password with them and then you have another that you put in a safety deposit box at the bank, and that means that it is secure and only you have access to it. And then a third, you can hand over to a custodian. And what is the best custodian available out there? Well, it's an attorney, someone that has attorney-client privilege, someone that has a secure location to store sensitive documents, and attorneys have that, which is pretty amazing. Here in Quebec, we also have notaries who uh, kind of are like lawyers here and have uh, the privilege of handling su uh, succession planning for people. But I know in the States, it's attorneys and pretty much, you know, there's different ways of doing it. But anyways, this technology makes that finally possible. No more handing over your master password to that attorney or notary. No more sharing a mnemonic, which is insane. And also, if you have a hardware wallet in the context of crypto with everything happening with FTX, you guys should be removing anything that's on exchanges and storing it on a hardware wallet. Well, that hardware wallet needs insanely resilient backups. And I think Superback is the world's most advanced backup and succession planning tool for this. So looking at the app, when you open it up for the first time, it has a few warnings. Obviously, do not use Superback on a non-hardened computer unless secrets are already present on that computer. So what that means is what you're seeing here, this computer, that's a factory reset MacBook Air M1. It has an amazing architecture that allows one to secure erase the whole computer after one is done using Superback. That means that it is cryptographically impossible to have sensitive secrets remain on that computer. It actually kind of means that if you want to use Superback and you're on a budget, you can actually go to the Apple store, buy a MacBook Air M1, do this stuff, factory reset it, and bring it back and get a refund, which is kind of insane. Um, and obviously, Superback cannot be held responsible for lost or stolen secrets and or associated data or value used at your own risk. I have put in everything that I have to make this as secure as possible. It does not have analytics. It doesn't have online licensing. It's designed to run offline. This computer right now actually is running Ventura and it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth disabled, and it will be factory reset after this demo. So that's how you should be using Superbact. You can also use it on Tails. Uh, it has an app release, uh, sorry, an app image release, but somehow it's really painful to set up printers on Tails. It's way easier on Mac. 
so I tend to like doing this on a Mac. Um, okay, so let's do this. Once you jump in the app, this is something that your mom would be able to use. It's ridiculously simple, but yet uses state-of-the-art cryptography, uses Argon2 as a key derivation function, it uses AES-256 uh, to encrypt the data with authentication, and it also uses Shamir Secret Sharing when you create governance schemes, uh, which essentially, if you have a look at backup types, standard is a 101, and distributed uses Shamir and also the AES encryption. So it's really designed to be extremely uh, reliable and really bulletproof. Um, so let's go about creating a secret. Let's say you have a hardware wallet. Maybe it's a cold card or a Trezor and you configure that device and you now have one of those little pieces of paper there with your mnemonic. Um, well, that I've always found kind of mind blowing putting that mnemonic on a piece of paper Something that's way more secure is using Superbacked. So uh, to put things into context, uh, you can actually click insert and it will actually generate for you a cryptographic, uh, crypt damn it, sorry, cryptographically secure mnemonic. Um, and as you can see, it's kind of highlighted. An example is if I just type anything else, you'll see it's not. So what that means is uh, this is actually a valid mnemonic. So Superbacked will validate BIP39 mnemonics using the checksum so you know that you haven't made a typo when you enter it there. Um, so that's super practical when you're configuring a hardware wallet or when you're backing up that little piece of paper before destroying it. Um, and yeah, so what else can we do with Superbacked? Well, Superbacked can actually generate a seven word passphrase from the EFF word list that you can use for your password manager or any other use case. So if you click here on insert, it will generate a seven word EFF passphrase. Uh, you can also just type whatever you want, by the way, anything that is text-based can be stored. And as you can see right now, we're at 84% remaining. So you can store quite a bit. Uh, it's not something that you'll store like your university essay in it. It's really designed for short secrets. Um, but it also has one last trick up its sleeve when it comes to secrets. And I'm super excited to actually ship this in V1. And that is TOTP. So if you have 2FA set up, maybe you have a YubiKey, and those little devices are really amazing. Uh, they can generate those six digit tokens, but they cannot be backed up. You really need to essentially, when you register a 2FA account, you need to scan it twice. So maybe you have two YubiKeys. I really wanted a paper backup for this. It's something that's really sensitive. It's especially true in the context of AWS backups. So have a look at this. If you click insert and you say scan from QR code, on this computer here, this is my daily driver. So it's air gap. Those two computers are offline. Uh, and I essentially, well offline, what I mean offline from each other, obviously this here is on ProtonMail right now. But say I want to back up my ProtonMail TOTP. Uh, how would I go about doing this? Well, you click scan QR code, it pops open the webcam and then if I come here, I can essentially scan that token uh, or that URL, I should have said. And then if I click on it, you'll see it says one URI found. Uh, so it's capable of registering those. And I'll show you in a minute how uh, Superbacked is essentially a TOTP app, which is insane. Uh, so right now we have a mnemonic, we have a passphrase, and we have a TOTP uh, recovery uh, secret thing. I don't know how this is called a TOTP, like OTP auth URL anyways. Um, and then you need to set a passphrase. Now, obviously that can be anything of your liking, but let's say you're like, I'm really going to put password one. Well, attacking that will take less than a second. So obviously that would be a horrible passphrase. Uh, Superback will not allow anything that takes less than 50 years to brute force. And the calculations here are probably very generous. It's very likely more than this because it uses very slow key, key, whoa, key derivation functions. Um, so something that's better essentially is to essentially get it to generate a five word uh, from the EFF short word list. And that is a passphrase that you would have to memorize. So if you're doing backups for yourself, could be something that you already have in your mind that's actually uh, you know secure. And if you're doing it for succession planning, well, that is something that you'll want to store in your password manager and share with your spouse or your kids uh, so yeah, it's cool to be able to just generate it randomly like this. Um, and then if you choose standard, it will create a one of one. This here is an exact version of that. Um, not exact, exact, but I mean the same kind of payload. And if you select distributed two of three, 
you can then type uh, succession. That's a label that's gonna show up like you can see right here. Uh, and then if you say create, it then does a whole bunch of mats behind and bam, we now have a set of three. As I mentioned earlier, it uses Shamir secret sharing and AES encryption. So it's essentially impenetrable. And if you wanna print a few, let's say you wanna print three, one for yourself, one for your spouse, one for your kid, you just select three. This one here is going into the safety deposit box. This one here is going with a trusted third party, such as an attorney, and you can then print it. What's really cool about uh, Mac OS compared to Tails is if you have a printer that supports AirPrint, uh, it's essentially plug and play. You don't need drivers, so you can do this while offline. It's really neat. The uh, brother I have right over there is a great printer. I'll recommend it on the website soon. Um, or you could save it to a file. So if you're on Tails, you could save it to files and then print those on a computer that has access to a printer. I don't favor that second option, but as I mentioned, it's essentially impossible to brute force those uh, in an economical way. So obviously if you're protecting a secret that's worth hundred million, I would totally do it on one computer that's totally air gapped. Um, but if the secret is not like, they say it's like a million, it's gonna be more expensive in electricity to brute force it than uh, you know, the million that you'll recover. So uh, once this is done, you may wanna recover from a secret and that's super easy and super backed. If you click file and you then click on restore, what you wanna do next is take one of your blocks and you essentially scan it and then you type the password and you press enter. It's gonna ask you for a second block. It can be any of the two. You just scan that and then you get to either copy the secret or show it. Now, obviously you wanna do this with no one having line of sight. You can use a thermal blanket to hide underneath if it's a pretty sensitive secret. Uh, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna show it to you. So if you click show, um, as you can see here, if you mouse over the mnemonic, it will give you the uh, numbers for each word. That is super convenient when you're validating a backup. So if you set up a hardware wallet, you type it in, create your backup, and then you can confirm all the words on the hardware wallet to make sure that they match. In the context of TOTP, you can also just mouse over, and if your computer has the right time, it will actually give you six digit tokens right there. So this is really an amazing way of backing up TOTP in the context of your email provider or AWS. Um, so what else can we do in Superbacked? Uh, there's a really cool feature here where anything you type, you can actually select and say view show selection as QR code. And that's a really cool way of uh, bridging air gaps. So if you wanna go from one computer to another, you can use Superbacked. Obviously anyone with line of sight on the QR code could exfiltrate it. Um, but if you're in a safe place, it's a really cool way of importing or exporting data from Superbact. Uh, you also have a feature here where you can duplicate a block. So if you made a copy for yourself, your spouse and your kid, and you have a second kid, well, you can then just take it, copy it and print a new one. So that's super useful there. Um, and there's one last trick that is actually quite novel. Um, if you type a mnemonic in uh, and you select standard type and then you put a password. I'm putting a really shitty password here. Um, if you click view, you can then show hidden secrets. So as you know, probably if you've watched the episode on BlockCrypt, Superback is powered by BlockCrypt for the AES-256 encryption. And it uses a scheme that has plausible deniability. So what that means is you can actually add hidden secrets and maybe here you wanna add a passphrase. It could be a BIP39 passphrase and then it has a different passphrase here and it forces you to have one that's at least 25% different from the other. And that means that when you log in or when you enter the passphrase for a one of one, this here is a great example. This here actually has two secrets and it's impossible for an, an adversary to actually know that there are two. Uh, I'll link to BlockRib down there in the description. So I think you guys are gonna be pumped. I know I am. I wanna take a moment to thank the supporters of Superbacked. A few of you have backed the project so far through donations. That has made it possible for me to work on this full-time for six months and make it available to everyone throughout the world for a price that is affordable. I've put in hundreds and hundreds of hours into this project and I could not be more proud of it. I think it's an amazing, amazing app for backups and something that just did not exist in the context of succession planning. So last but not least, uh, if you're on the waiting list, 
you can and you will get a discount sent to your email. The discount will make the app available for $99 instead of $149. And if you have some wealth, if you wanna support this project and you can afford $9.99, there's a really special limited uh, offer called Super Backer. You can become a Super Backer and support the project. Uh, and uh, to show our gratitude, I will spend a one hour call with you to actually plan your backup and succession planning strategy. Uh, you'll also get unlimited free updates and upgrades forever. And you will get a one year uh, entry level plan to Superback Cloud. Superback Cloud is a feature that I have in mind that I'm super pumped about where you're gonna be able to drag and drop files onto Superbacked and it will generate keys that will be stored in the paper backup and the files will be up, uh, uploaded essentially to Amazon S3. It will actually replicate those files throughout two geographical regions. So uh, it will probably be like the most resilient backup system that exists out there. And I need your support essentially to keep on working on this. If I wanna you know, develop those new features uh, without raising venture capital and you know having the governance of this project be at risk early on, well, that's where you guys can really help out as super backers. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, head out on superback.com. It's really, really exciting. And let me know in the comments if you have feature suggestions, if you have ideas. There's gonna be a GitHub repository where you can create issues if you find bugs or uh, you know, add feature requests and all this good stuff. And also that repo can help you validate the integrity of releases. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for you today. See you soon, bye.